Welcome back to Workshop Friend, and this is part two of upgrading the tool holder on my shaper. Well, last video we made the holder and the nut and continuing on from that we need to make the tool holder which goes in here and for that I'm using a piece of uh, one inch bright mild steel so it's over to the lathe now for the next operations. The maximum diameter of this component is one inch or 25.4 millimeters but the main body is only three quarters or 19 millimeters. So I'm using tailstock support and removing the metal as quickly as I can. The tool is just one of my ordinary high speed steel tools uh, ground on the off hand grinder just by eye. And you can see it's easily handling here a depth of cut of about 125 thou or three millimeters at six millimeters off the diameter in one go. So here I'm marking out the width of the flange, which is quarter of an inch or 6.35 at the outer diameter. I ground up another piece of high speed steel with a generous radius, and I'm using this to cut the 60 degree tapered section, which blends into the parallel section with a nice generous radius in the corner. It seems like there's chatter going on here, but actually that noise is coming from the background and I believe it's a seagull just outside my workshop. I'd like to turn my attention now to the clapper box. Of course in normal operation it uh, functions like that, but we need to hold it closed. I think a video clip from the previous video illustrates why for this particular application this is necessary. Now one of the consequences of that will be that I won't be able to rely on the cutting forces keeping the clapper box closed. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to lock the clapper box and I'd like to have something that is reasonably easy to change so that I can revert to the, the normal tool holder. So the clamp sits on the edge of the clapper box, like this, this piece here, and the movable part of the clapper box comes in here, like that. And the reason I've come up with these proportions is I want to have the center line of the bolt as close as possible to the, the clamping area, i.e. here. Uh, consistent with not getting too close to the edge of this and I want the fulcrum to be as far away as possible so hence those proportions and the reason I put a countersunk screw in there is because I want the C-spanner to come over the top of it and not foul so socket head cap screws wouldn't be appropriate um, the other thing is that 
uh, I've kept this as deep as possible here because I'm going to use the clamps to drill through uh, for the tapping holes into this material. So effectively, uh, part way through, I'm going to use the clamp as a drill jig to make sure I get the space from here to here correct. So that gives an explanation of the shape. For the material, I have this uh, half inch by three quarter mild steel stock. Uh, it will come nicely out of that. In fact, this three quarters um, of an inch is that dimension there, so that, that doesn't need to be changed. But uh, the half inch will have to be uh, machined down to the correct depth uh, because space is a premium. So I'll get both clamps out of this and we'll make them as a pair and then uh, cut them off and uh, uh, face them to make two clamps uh, from one piece of stock. So I was finding that the, the work was just slipping in the vise. Uh, I guess there's probably too much overhang here. So I put this little mini jack in here and uh, we'll try again. And uh, what I want to do is uh, basically take off 90 thou off each size approximately to bring it to the right thickness. I was slow to realize that actually my half inch end mill was blunt, causing the work to move in the vise. Anyway, I swapped this out for my um, shell mill with relatively new inserts, and it was a huge improvement. That's better. I think that um, half inch end mill was blunt. Just clocking up on the machined underside, ready to take the other side down to the final thickness. So now working on the underside of the clamps and I'm marking out here the width of the pads which form the fulcrum of the two clamps. and now just squaring off the end of the work. And now marking out the center line of the two clearance holes for the five millimeter countersunk screws. So I've cut the two clamps out of the stock that I've machined and now the challenge is just to square them off and uh, it will be a bit tricky in the mill without some kind of fixture. Certainly my setup there doesn't make it very convenient so the easiest way for me is just to put it in my small 
four door chuck and square them up that way. I've carefully deburred both of the clamps and what we're going to do now is mount them on the clapper box and uh, drill through using the clamp as a guide so I previously drilled that just the tapping size now if you look very carefully you notice I put a slip of paper here in fact a double slip of paper um, the reason for that is I want to make sure that these don't bind up and also because when I measured the positions of the holes from the end and hence that location face there I discovered this one was ten thousandths of an inch further from the edge than this one so to make sure that the clamps are going to be interchangeable I put that in there to provide a little bit of clearance so I know that if I drill there and drill this one on this side they can be used interchangeably that's the reason for that and of course that all boils down to the fact that I was center popping this by eye. I'm not using the DRO to locate the holes and that 10 thou error crept in. Okay, what we're going to have to do now is rotate the head and that's going to require some further adjustment yes I'm going to have to think about this a bit well after fiddling around with trying to attach my square to this I think the easiest way to go about this is just to tap this and clamp this in position and then match the other one to suit so that's what I'm doing so I'm just going to drill this to depth and then uh, tap it and move on to the next one okay well that certainly makes getting this clamp in line with the other much easier So I tried to use this kind of countersink for the M5 countersunk hole here, and you can really you can see it's come out terribly. Um, it just wasn't successful. I ha I've got a different kind of countersink for different size holes, but not one large enough for this. So I'm going to have to uh, sort that out in the lathe, and uh, I've got this set up here. I'm actually going to turn the cone, so I've got this set up here to get the hole on center line and then I'll uh, just turn that cone
Well it's time to case harden the two clamps so I'm bringing them both up to red heat dipping them in the compound and then I'm going to reheat them and quench them in water. So after cleaning up, the two clamps look like this, nice and clean and ready for installation. Okay, that's all we have time for today. So we've reached the stage where um, basically we have, this comes in from behind, uh, the nut sits on the front here and we have our two clamps which fit in either side of the nut and they're fairly quick and easy to install as you can see and they provide a nice rigid clamping force on the clapper box so it becomes one rigid assembly there won't be any movement within that so these two items and the nut are hardened everything else I think is going to be left soft so I hope you join me for the next video where we'll install this and we'll make inter interchangeable um, tool holders to go with this and then hopefully test it out. So I do hope you join me next video.